Friday night game. It is the Good Friday Clash. It is the Canterbury Bulldogs taking on the South Sydney Rabbitohs. I'll throw it across to you to talk to me about this Bulldogs lineup. Yeah, you got Hayes Perham in the fullback role, Jake Kraz and Josh Adekar, the Fox in the wing positions, Jake Avalua and Paul Atamore Atom- uh, uh, in the centre position, Alamotti. Oh, it must be Italian again. Uh, Matt Burton, Kyle Flanagan in the halves pairing. A uh, strong, strong halves pairing. Max King, Ryan Sutton in the forward role with Reed Marnie to make the hook position. Corey Odell, Jacob Pearson to make second row. Harrison Edwards to round out the lock. Josh Reynolds keeps his number 14 jersey. Kurt, Curtis Morin, Jaden Tanner, Jackson Toppany, and Braden Burns to round out the interchange and 18 HIA jersey. Um, is it is it me or is this really unchanged from the Bulldogs from last week? I don't know how many ins or outs. I think they've got one due to the, that um, hit drop so suspension. So you've got... You've got Raymond Mariner, who's out with a head knock. You've got Franklin Pele, who has a broken arm, and Ockenbore is suspended. That was a that was a stupid, stupid um, suspension to get because it was clear as day you know, compared to the other the the three across the whole weekend. That was a more clear and obvious one. Um, very very stupid. But they come up against South Sydney side also. Off a win, uh, off a loss, should I say? At Core Stadium, four o'clock, Friday afternoon, Good Friday. Uh, just listening to the history, um, in RL three sixty last night. You listened to Michael Ennis. This game used to be on a Monday uh, to share with the Tigers and the Parramatta Eels, and what a bludger of a game it was then. And they moved it to here. The rivalry is just. There's always something. This 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 game always brings out something. Whether it's the, the the plastic bottles being thrown at refs, whether it's the weird and wonderful rule that no one's ever heard of that's in the rule book. Is it this? You know, is it someone kicking a field goal at the last minute? There's always some sort of drama in this game. Um, unfortunately, I will not be at this game. Um, I normally am at this game. This year, with my father and my two uh, unfortunate uh, South Sydney uh, faithful supporters there, um, donning the the red and green for for unknown reasons, but look, they they come again uh, last week. They played some wet weather football. Percent, percent, uh, completion rate was high. Errors were down with this Canterbury side, and they look like they're just. They're just going through the motions. They don't care who they come up against. They're just going to play dog football, what it means to be a Canterbury player. And if they can't beat you with plan A, they're looking for plan C, B, C, D, E, all the way down to triple A um, in the in their archive. So uh, it's going to be an interesting one for me. What about you, Tony? Well, I mean, if, I think if you would have asked me off the top of my head, do I remember the last time the Bulldogs won a Good Friday clash? I, I definitely struggle. I definitely struggle to know when the last time they won this clash or when the last time they didn't get dominated by this South Sydney side. So I think it's tough. Obviously, like we said, we mentioned Raymond Mariner. We have mentioned Pele. We mentioned Ockenbore. Kick out still out. He's concussed. Max Kinn, Jacob Preston, they've both been named, but they are both carrying injuries. So... It is quite scary to think what's going to happen because if they have a player go down now, you're looking at the likes of Josh Reynolds. He can come on. He can do a job. He can jay up the crowd. Curtis Morin, Jaden Tanner, Jackson Toppany, they're not big names that we think are going to come in and change this game. So it wouldn't surprise me if obviously Serrato comes in and goes, nah, you know what, let's go chuck a Braden Burns who's played before into this squad and Andrew Davey who's played before and let's kind of shake it up a little bit. But it is a good squad. Now, obviously, massive shout-out. I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong to Kotaku or Kotaku, who did say he is a massive Matt Burden fan. So he did jump on the comments. I'm pretty sure he is from New Zealand, but he is a massive Matt Burden fan. So let's hopefully he can put up a few bombs so that you can have your pleasure over the Easter weekend. But back start, we'll chuck it across to the South Sydney Rabbitohs. You've got Latrell Mitchell, Tane Milne, Isaiah Tass, Campbell Graham, Isaac Thompson, Cody Walker, Ilias, Tavita Tavola, Damian Cook, Thomas Burgess, Keon, Jacob Hurst, Cameron Murray, Jack Cartwright, Daniel Fafita, David Mowali, Hamuseli, and Michael Cheekham. Now, 
A big noticeable out here obviously is Alex Johnston. He does have a head knock. He will miss this game. He should be back next week. Obviously, Tavita Tavola has been named after a knee injury, which does mean that Fafita does move to the bench into the number 15. So it is an interesting lineup. Cody Walker, the man on screen right now, the last two weeks, he's kind of just turned around and gone, no, I'm not going to get my head in the wrong place. I'm not going to go start a fight. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to play football. And we saw that he scored that great try against Manly. He won in that game against Manly, arguably with that try. He then comes out next week. And I think if you look at one through 18, this is not the man I'm pinning it on from last week's loss against Melbourne. So he definitely has a great side. I think all the criticism that Latrell Mitchell has copped, he's going to bounce back in this game. It's a matter of time until he bounces back. He shows why he deserves to play fullback. He shows why he should be. I guess in that um, conversation, if Tedesco does get ruled out of origin, he needs to start going, I'm going to play fullback. I want to play fullback. Block the media. Let's play football. So I expect a big bounce back from him. Keon, I expect him to run over whoever he's running at. I don't know if it's going to be um, Flanagan or if Reynolds comes off the bench. Um, I expect him to run straight over him and put a try on the line. But Baxter, what do you make of this side? And obviously, I know you have a few stats that you've been looking up in the meantime. Go for it. Yeah, look, to lose against Melbourne uh, in a tight game like they did with, you know, they were coming back towards the end with the, with the, with the issues around, surrounding the Melbourne Storm side with the regarding of injuries, uh, departing players and whatnot. Um, it's surely got to burn a, po- a hole in your pocket that you've, you know that one. That one. That one stings a little because you give it another twenty minutes, and I reckon South Sydney actually do the storm there. Um, we talked about it in the review about Latrell. You know, does he like to warm up? That look, time will tell. Maybe he is saving himself, not burning himself out early on. You know, round one to five, but come rounds. Uh, I, I think we've got twenty seven this year, but say rounds twenty to twenty five, he he just on another level and he's just you see South Sydney like riding high up in first, second, third, wherever you want to put him. But the stats that I've got at, at the moment, you said you don't know remember the last time uh, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs won this Good Friday game. Now I will re- <laughs> it was a long time ago. It was pre COVID twenty seventeen. It was the uh fourteenth of April. Uh they won twenty four nine over the South Sydney Rabbitohs. South Sydney Rabbitohs in this game, are leading this seven to four. Um, uh, in seven four wins. First game was in twenty twelve, which, as I said, was moved from the Monday to the Friday, and ever since then, seven wins to four. Results, given on that results, say South are more likely to win, but you sort of compare the teams from the past, Bankstown Bulldogs squad and you sort of compare them to this one. I think this one beats more um in the in the last eleven years. So if I have to pick um my team here and I'm gonna go on upset here. I'm gonna go dogs one to twelve. I think they show a little bit more fight, a little bit more bite in their in their game and they, uh, they play a little bit straight straighter than than the South uh, South do um especially if Cody Walker's not on all, it, all it's going to take is to get under that, uh, that bloke on screen skin, rile him up, and the game is yours. Just keep pounding through. Just get those boys running over uh, over the front forward line, and you'll be seeing the numbers tack on to the score line. Um, so I'm going to go Canterbury 1-12 to 12 in my bet. What about you, Tony? Um, it might come a bit of a shock. It might come a bit of hate, and this has nothing to do with this Bulldog side. We saw last week they did have, obviously, injuries. They did have kick out with, suspe- uh, with concussion, sorry, and they still got the job done against a very, I guess, underwhelming Cowboys side this year, but we know when they do hit their peak, a very, very good Cowboys side, a very well-coached Cowboys side. So, yes, they're missing players, but they do have that structure that you have to break down. So, massive props to the Bulldogs, but this is the game where... I think this is almost a trap for the Bulldogs. It's almost a bring them back down to earth game. So I think the Rabbits, they know how much this game means. They're close to home. They want to get the job done. They want to enjoy Easter. Latrell wants to obviously go and um, show off his cows the next day at the Easter show. So there is a lot of things here that are going to go in their favour. 
I expect. And yes, I did just see a message coming in saying Naughty Doggy, but it's a guard dog. It's doing its job, so we can let that go. But um, she's obviously excited that the doggies are playing. She's excited we're talking about the Bulldogs, but she's not going to like when I say I'm tipping the Rabbitohs 13 plus and I'm backing Latrell any time to make a statement Ooh. this game with Cody Walker. So you've gone Dogs 1 to 12. I have gone South Sydney 13 plus. But let's jump into the next game. But before we actually do jump into the next game, just a massive note that this game will kick off at 4.05 p.m. So it's not your usual 6 o'clock early kickoff from Friday. It is a 4.05 p.m. kickoff See, at a this stadium. Is, this is where I say, or where I touched on in the Moa one, the NRL had an opportunity to seize on this weekend like it was theirs. Like you're playing one game Thursday, and this is just a little rant. you got one game Thursday. And two games, four o'clock, I think it's four and six on a good Friday, or it could be four and four and eight. Four four and eight. eight. Again, see? Stupid enough because it's Channel 9. Then you've got two on Saturday, two on Sunday, and then one on Monday. Like, we quickly just have a look at the kickoff times and, it, like, surrounding them. So Thursday's 8 o'clock, Friday, 4 and 8, Saturday, 5, 5.30, 7.30, Sunday, 4, four and Four and six fifteen, and then Monday at four pm. Why don't you just have two games on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and, and seize upon the moment of having a maybe a one thirty kickoff and a what like a four o'clock, uh, even a three thirty or a, a quarter to four kickoff. They could just you like like yourself or me who could just sit on the couch and just enjoy the whole weekend of watching football. For me, I won't be doing that. I'll be on a deck chair somewhere off the uh, the east coast of Australia at the time, so I'll be getting some sun rays. But <laughs> this is the NRL stupidity this round. Like, like I'm not a big fan of Monday night football, nor am I a big fan of Thursday night football. But this weekend, you could have capitalised a little bit more. More and again, as you said, four o'clock kickoff. It's not your usual Friday night, <laughs> six pm kickoff for the first game. So. I think the NRL needs to look at that a little bit earlier. No, I, I kind of tend to disagree. I do agree partly with the Roosters game. I think that could have been moved to maybe a Saturday game, get rid of that Thursday night for this week. But I think this Friday game, what it does, and I know your family does this every single year, is go to the Easter show, enjoy the morning, go watch this game, get back for the fireworks. So I think we've also got to take into account a lot of people are going to be obviously doing that out of this game. I think it's a great time for kids. They're back home by 8.30. If they stay for the Easter show, they can go back and enjoy some rides. So I've got no issue with that. I've got an issue with maybe the scheduling of what games are where. Like, okay, I know it's predicted at the start of the year, but at the moment you've got Cowboys and Dolphins and no respect to the, uh, disrespect to the Cowboys, but no one expected the Dolphins to do well so far this season. Chuck them on a Thursday night. No matter what's going to happen, you're going to get Queensland fans watching that. Whereas Melbourne Roosters, you'll get the dedicated fans, but a lot of people, they're still wrapping up at work. They're still having a shower. They're having dinner at 8 p.m. So you kind of lose that. But I guess the NRL knows what they're doing. They've got their TV rights. They get told what time their games have to be on. A lot of it's done by Channel 9. But enough about that. We're here to talk football.